Hello, can I um, get you a drink or something? Well, I may as well tell you now I'm gay. <laughs> Sorry? I mean, I think you probably knew all along, but it's as well to be as frank as possible, I'm gay. Yes, but would you like a drink? Oh, how nice. Oh, that's really, really kind. I won't actually, thanks, but that's really kind of you. Hmm. Um, have you met my wife yet? No. Um, well, obviously I'm not going to be that interested in her physically, you know, but I, I'd love to meet her on a sort of no-involvement basis. That's if my being gay is going to upset her or embarrass her at all. No, sure. Uh, darling, um, let me introduce uh, Jonathan. He's uh, gay. <laughs> staying with the Masons. How do you do? I'd just like to say how, how grateful I am to you for letting me come to your party, because obviously... Being gay, a lot of my time is spent in the seedy netherworld of the lonely and repressed homosexual. Um, and it's just really nice to be able to come to a nice house and, and be with nice people. Oh, well, we're glad you're enjoying it. <laughs> what do you do? Well, there are, there are one or two bars that I normally go to. They're a kind of meeting place for a uh... No, no, no. No, no, what I meant is, what is your job? Oh, I see. I see. Well, being gay, I work in an office. Mm. Hi. Hello. Excuse me. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Does that hi include me? Because, because I'm gay. I was just wondering whether it. Uh... Oh yes, certainly. Well. Oh, how nice. What a nice guy. Oh, very tolerant. Very, very nice. nice man. Yes. Very nice. 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 Another glass of taffia wine, Gavin? <laughs> they are all together too kind, sir. Uh, thank you. Get yes, sir. That man in the corner. Uh, what of him, sir? What of him? Uh, well, the whisper puts out that he is merry. Merry, sir? A fox to intend. Disguised. Witted. All of a spatchcock. Nay, sir, you do not collect my meaning. He is merry. A royster. A bright blade. A Lombard Street high stepper. A blood! Oh, Tish, my Lord Devon, and four and Wimpo, seven books, you're too provoking. He is musical. Musical? Like Mr. Purcell? No, sir, not like Mr. Purcell. I collect your bamming me. Bamming you? Funning me, quizzing me out. He is a friend of Corridon. He is so. So? So, I'm all in the dark, Sir Roland. Look at me. You recollect our schooling, how you and I were chambered together all of our fourth term? Yes, yes. Really? Well, sir, we would, of sort, and I blush at the remembrance, rehearse the sport of Jove together. Ah, football! Nay, no, sir, not football. <laughs> Hear me out, you're too coaxing. We would play pell-mell in the Duke Bowl. Frolic the Dangler and Coddle Exits. <laughs> oh, that. I sir, that. Play Master Rudling and the Groom. <laughs> the eye in so nigh. Well, of these games, is this Jack Cullion ever a known prentice master and proved captain? That's nothing. The fellow he's talking to is a pop. <laughs> <laughs> Could you get out of the way, please? Could you take up the whole corridor? I want to get through. Well, yeah, all right. Just uh, hang on a minute. I'll... Excuse me, but do you realise this person is disabled? I should damn well hope he is taking up the whole corridor like this with wheelchairs. <laughs> if he wasn't, I'd knock his head off. This person cannot... Speak. Speak? And here you are objecting to his wheelchair. Shopping precincts can be very difficult indeed for people who... Haven't got any money. Haven't got any money. And all you can do is shout and bully and show absolutely no... Understanding. ...pity whatsoever. Here, here's a good one. This will lighten the atmosphere. Bit of an old chestnut, but you'll love it. Man walks into a bar, he goes, ouch. It was an iron bar. <laughs> rather good. I'm laughing at him. You're laughing at a disabled person. Simply cannot believe. He told a joke. Oh, I see. So you find this disabled person funny, do you? He amuses you, does I he? I told him a joke. Did you, dear? That's marvellous. You see how he's trying to cope. He's only telling a joke, and all he can do is laugh. I only hope I'd be as brave. Joe, he's in my way. I want to get through. Well, I'll deal with it. I'll do it. Excuse me. 
The thing is, you yeah, see, I know, this I'll go gentleman wants through. to you... get through. Yeah, I understand. Okay, the corridor isn't exactly yeah. wide. No, so if you get out of the way. So if I just, yes, yeah. uh, tuck you in. Yeah, oh, I see. So you want me to burn down the yes, shop? Yes, that's right. Yeah, blingity, blongity, 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 bl
No, Jamaica isn't in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> Cruel, dirty people, the Arabs. She'll come back with no hands and clap. <laughs> That'd be a clever trick. What? Juggling. That'd be a clever trick. I once tried to cut open my juggler. Your juggler vein? No, my juggler. In the days when I ran a circus, I found his fingers in the till. And you were forced to operate? And there was no choice. I made a rough and ready job of it with blue tack and prit, the non-sticky, sticky stuff. What, didn't you call the doctor? Afraid not. You didn't call the doctor afraid not? <laughs> what else didn't you call him? No, afraid not. Alfred not. That's what I didn't call him. Because it wasn't his name. <laughs> What's that, Mr. Baker? What? On the end of my finger. Your hand? No, no, the other end. Oh, the eve of the Battle of Agincourt. <laughs> Yesterday, as I remarked, as how it was pretty much a case of once more into the breach, dear friends, once more, or close up our war with the English dead. Yes, I remember thinking at the time, what a load of bollocks you do. <laughs> oh, well, that's just maybe. But the king nicked the old speech. The old speech. I heard him yesterday giving it down word for word like he'd made it up himself. The bastard. He nicks all my best lines, he does. Never a word of credit. Never, and as old Dick were saying the other night, it's pretty much a case of the games afoot, cry God for Harry England and St George. None of that, no, thank you very much indeed. The game's afoot? What does that mean? The game's not afoot, it's a battle. Well, I realise it's a battle now, but at the time I thought it was afoot, see? Well, he didn't care, though, he just quotes me like a ruddy parrot. Like that old Danish knob I used to work for. Amla. Amla, that's him, yeah. You never met such a tongue-tied tosspot in all your life. <laughs> my dad's a ghost. <laughs> my mum's married my uncle. I know, suddenly I come along with my slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, and it's, oh, don't young Hamlet talk nice. <laughs> Here, do you sing when you're on the car, Zeke? Oh, I take a book to read usually. Oh, well, I soliloquise, see? I'll be sat there on the car as he soliloquising, and old Hamlet will be outside, ears against the wall, taking down every blind word I'm saying. <laughs> That's why there used to be a big flushing noise in the middle of the to be or not to be speech. <laughs> Got cut in the uh, second folio, though. <laughs> oh, well. Gentlemen in England now abed shall think themselves a curse they were not here and hold their man looks cheap. I shouldn't be surprised. Excuse me. Excuse me. Do you know where the freshwater standpipe is, please? And the ladies, Roger. Could you ask them where the ladies is? Time is bursting and she simply won't use the bushes. Ye yes, all right, Jill. And also, what's all this rot about a battle? I mean, we assumed this was an official site, otherwise, obviously, we wouldn't have parked here. Oh, God. Oh, look, Roger. Simon's weed on your pentax. <laughs> Did you <laughs> What, you French or something? I mean, is it punk rock? Is this a pop festival? Is that what it is? The Kleenexes, Roger! Jill, we brought three boxes. Well, we must have used them all. Roger, do you think there's something wrong with Simon? I mean, he just seems to sort of gush from every orifice. <laughs> Mr. The Army of England and St. George, loyal servants to King Harry. We few, we happy few. We band of brothers. You plagiarising bastard, that's one of mine. <laughs> oh, bloody hell, Jill, this is the absolute limit. We've driven through a time warp. <laughs> well, Jill, you were navigating. <laughs> <laughs> Where the hell are we? 15th century. Oh, Lord, tell me, can't you give me some kind of warning? Oh, God, Roger, the place is awash. Well, can't you just put <laughs> corks in the little sods or something? Roger! They are only children.
Full again. If I hadn't run all the way from the office, I'd never have got a seat. And what's the point, anyway? When I do get home, Mother will be on and on at me about going to night school and getting a better job. I wish that she... I don't know. Christ, that man is ugly. I don't think I've ever seen an uglier man. God, someone around here smells of sweat. I bet everyone thinks it's me. God, this is boring. I suppose I could always do the crossword. Well, I couldn't always do it. That woman goes to the lavatory. There's a strange thought. I suppose she's thinking how strange it is that I go to the lavatory. Hmm, I don't know. Life's really strange. Could you shut up, please? So, Florence Nightingale. It's rather a strange name. I'm afraid the troops will find it terribly amusing. Captain? No, you know, being named after a town in Italy, you're in for a hell of a ragging. And you, Captain? Do you find it amusing? A woman going to war? A woman anxious to experience the pain and degradation herself? A woman named after a character in the Magic Roundabout? Don't want to laugh at anything, me. Your references are excellent. Carries a lamp like a true pro. Guy's hospital. Uh, if it's someone who can carry a lamp you want, Florence is dynamite. Great Ormond Street. That's really very impressive. I have brought my lamp, if you would care to... Well, yes, of course. I must have an example of your work, Miss Nightingale. Miss Nightingale, I promise you that a year from now, you will be a national heroine. Now look here, you men. The best way to deal with these ruskies is to mix them up in a bowl with a bit of milk and banana. <laughs> All right, son, Major, don't stamp about. It isn't clever or smart to stamp about. Anybody can stamp about. Yes, sir. Now, what do you want? Chief Nurse and Luck Carrier has arrived, sir. All right, show him in. You promised not to stamp about. I say that that fellow's wearing a dress. Shut up, young Oates, can't you see? It's not a fella, but a fellow's greatest comfort and companion. A dog in a dress? Yes. <laughs> I am not a dog, General Bolloki. Bolloki. General Bolloki. I am a woman. There's only two kinds of woman, young Oates. Those who were born just outside Stevenage and those who weren't. Either way, they spell one word. Tea cosy. General, this war is not a game. If it were, it would have dice and a board. And little metal counters. Score sheets and pencils. And good time forfeits. And a decent set of rules. A green base rule for four to five players. Thank you. Who did that? What? Who just kissed my shadow? Come along. Own up. Which one of you was it? No, we didn't touch it. Us. We never did. Sergeant! It. Sergeant! My shadow has just been interfered with. <laughs> well, near it. Right. And why not, pray? You're supposed to. I'm the lady with the lamp. All night I parade around ministering comfort, and you two ingrates haven't even got the decency to kiss my shadow. Will you put that 
frigging lamp out. I'm trying to get some sleep. Yeah, turn the lamp off, lady. We're not all bleeding insomniacs, you know. <laughs> Conditions I have seen in your camp are truly appalling. Well, I'm sorry, Miss Nightingale, but those are my conditions, and you'll just have to accept them. The men are starved, both physically and spiritually. They are forced to eat flour and water just to keep body and soul together. Miss Nightingale, believe me, if I could help you, I would. But I'm hampered at every turn by my total incompetence and lack of compassion. Miss, Miss. Sergeant, Sergeant. It's my leg, Miss. I, I, I think it's hurting. Well, perhaps that'll stop you from stamping about you, bastard. <laughs> He's a gruff old stick, but we love him, miss. Sergeant, I promise to do everything in my power to save your leg. Bless you, miss. I can't guarantee to find it, but if I do, I promise to save it for you. Miss. You're an angel, miss. Come along, General. Spoil them, madam. Thank you, sir. God bless you, Miss Nightingale, for all you've done for me. Sergeant, it is my duty and my calling to alleviate suffering. Sign on me leg and all. Pity the boys nicked your lamp and you had to do it in the dark. You really should have said that. I didn't like to not be an educated man. Besides, it's a footballer's dream. Sergeant, I return to England tomorrow and I hereby make this vow. I shall go to the highest in the land to ensure that this unfortunate and dismal occurrence never happens again. To you. Well, not to that leg, anyway. <laughs> and so, Miss Nightingale, you are a national heroine. The people are quite addicted to you. <laughs> I own that I have done my duty, ma'am. I bet you don't own as much as me. I own lots. And the Queen, you know. The war fares badly, methinks. The men are ill-led and ill-equipped. What they need is another Wellington. I am afraid you will find that Wellingtons seldom come in pairs, my dear. Cardigan is entirely useless. Absurd names they have. My Lord Sandwich allowed himself to be named after a convenience food. And as for MacDonald of the MacDonalds, well, the whole thing stinks of private sponsorship. You know they must be making an absolute fortune. Hi, my name's the Duke of Wellington, and I'd like to talk to you about these little booties. They're durable, long-lasting, and above all, they won't wear out. I tried them and liked them so much that I changed my name to Wellington. I say, uh, Lord Kleenex. Oh, yeah, a bit of a scandal up at the bar. Apparently, a J.C.B. Lillette's finally ditching that woman. Or the, uh, the Duchess of Unipart, you mean? Yes, that, yeah. sir. I was just saying to Freddie Frisbee here that that should give Jeremy Bradford and Bingley a shot at the title. Yeah. What? Oh, but I thought he had an understanding with Lady Bozine Bradflake. Oh, history, old man. Is that one of the Shropshire Bozine Bradflakes? Oh, no, that's one of the Norfolk Bozine Oh, Bradflakes. no, no. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Sweet. 